Sports Radio Detroit is proud to present, in association with Detroit Sports Media, the Whip and Nene podcast on sportsradiodetroit.com. With your show host, Pete Spivak of Detroit's 1130 WDFN The Fan and iHeartMedia Detroit. And American Pharaoh! Ryan Dickey of Firehouse Racing Staples. But Exaggerator has turned the tables. He has won the Preakness Stakes. And Dana Garuder of Baseball Writers Association of America, who's also a professional racing handicapper. Classic Empire digs in. Cloud computing draws alongside. They come to the finish together. Noses apart. Cloud computing has defeated Classic Empire in the Preakness. And now it's time for the Whip and Nene podcast. Here are your show hosts, Pete Spivak, Ryan Dickey, and Dana Garuder. Oh, yeah, gentlemen, welcome in. It is the Preakness Steak Show here for the Whip and Nene podcast on SportsRadioDetroit.com, SRD. I am indeed one of the show hosts. I am Pete Spivak, joined by my usual two cohorts. That would be Ryan Dickey and Dana Garuder. Gentlemen, welcome in. Thank you. Welcome. Sir? Hope everybody had a, a good Kentucky Derby. Unfortunately, as uh, the both of you know, we don't have any racetracks to go to anymore, at least in our general area, aside from Northville Downs. And obviously, since our last show, gentlemen, um, does anybody have any comments on the Supreme Court passing the sports betting law, which could possibly include horse racing back here in Michigan? Anybody have any comments on that stuff? Well, I, I, I have some comments on it. And those would be, and those would be. It's a little, it's a little late for, uh, for for Michigan, at least in terms of the horse racing industry. I mean, I think if that had happened a few years earlier, it might may, maybe Hazel Park would still be open. But um, I, 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 you know, I think it, it's going to be a, a boon to betters around around the state. But I just, I don't know if it's going to really help horse racing all that much because we only have one track left, and that even that one's going to be moving in a couple of years gotcha ryan anything to add you can bet on sports apparently so <laughs> yeah i think i'll try that i i haven't i haven't i haven't tried that yet no, yeah I, betting I, on I sports have, teams i'm sure you don't know anything sports. about that yeah i used to be a racing sports supervisor in las vegas uh long long time ago back in the 90s so uh i'm ready to dust it off and start betting on some uh sports as soon as michigan will allow it well i hope that they uh will get that done because obviously uh it seems to be a bipartisan act uh no matter what your politics it seems like at least in michigan both the republicans and democrats seem to be working together because boys they see dollar signs and we all know that that's what makes politics work well what uh what Dana and Ryan and myself usually do here on the Whip and Nanny podcast is that we break down the road to the Kentucky Derby, all the 35 prep races, I'm sorry, all the prep races that run from September to April. There's more than 35. Uh, and so we break down usually that schedule, which leads to the Kentucky Derby. But uh, since the Kentucky Derby has already gone off, we are in triple crown mode right now. And since we had the Kentucky Derby just two weeks ago, won by the great Justify, who broke the Apollo curse from 1882, Justify will now move on to the good old grand Preakness Stakes. And before we uh, get into the Preakness Stakes, I'd like to remind everybody to log on to SportsRadioDetroit.com and check out the latest episode of the SRD Roadshow with Roger, Ben, the Mikes, and Jamie as they talk sports and pop culture on Sports Radio Detroit. It's a weekly show. Again, the SRD Road Show every week with Roger, Ben, the Mikes, and Jamie on SportsRadioDetroit.com. Make sure you check it out. So back here to the Whip and Nene podcast with myself, Pete Spivak, Dana Garuda, and Ryan Dickey. We're going to break down the grade one, one mile and three sixteenths, $1.5 million, 143rd run for the Black Eyed Susans, the Preakness States from Pimlico Park in Baltimore. This will be race 13 on your card, a field of only eight horses. Post time for around 6.48 Eastern time. The weather forecast, showers, showers, and more showers. A flood watch is scheduled for Friday evening into Saturday morning, basically a monsoon. I am not kidding about that. So let's see if these horses can swim. And with that, Ryan, I will toss it over to you, my friend. Well, I've been thinking all day about what I was going to say here today, but I don't really have anything earth-shattering. Um, right now I'm at Presque Isle Downs in beautiful Erie, Pennsylvania, 
We're uh, getting ready. We've got uh, nine minutes to post to race number seven. So I'm looking at that. But also, let's talk about the Black Eyed Susan. I'm going to go with Coach Rocks. It's the horse that I liked. I liked the filly in the um, Kentucky Oaks. She did not get the job done. Hopefully she learned how to run in the slot because it is going to be sloppy, like you said. Uh, it's just supposed to rain buckets and buckets and buckets. So I'm going to go with Coach Rocks and the Black Eyed Susan. Talking about the Preakness, I wish I had something phenomenal to say, but I really don't. Here's what I'm going to do. Basically, if I had a $100 limit to bet on the Preakness, I am not going to bet Justify at one to two odds. He's probably going to win. He's definitely the best. I do like Good Magic. He's three to one on the morning line. He'll probably be four or five to two when it's all said and done. What I want to do is I'm going to play out of my hundred dollars. I'm going to play a ten dollar exacta, the number five, which is Good Magic, overall. So there's seven other horses. That's going to be seventy dollars, and I'm going to play thirty dollars place on Good Magic, number five. And the hope here is that Good Magic wins. And somebody other than Justify comes in second. If Good Magic wins the Preakness and somebody other than Justify comes in second, we're going to make some money. If not, we're basically throwing $100 away. I don't like any of the other horses besides Good Magic and Justify in this race. I think it's a very weak field. I do like Good Magic. I think that he can get the job done, but I don't know. Justify looks like a beast. But uh, like I said, I was hoping to have something, you know, awesome and, and, and inspiring but i really don't i'm going to play ten dollar exact to five overall and a thirty dollar place ticket on number five good magic and that's it i'm not really going to play much of the card so i'm going to send it over to dana all righty well I, I i i don't like playing chalk or you know taking short prices but i just don't see much uh here in terms of the long shafts uh justify not only was the dominant horse in the kentucky derby he should have an easier trip in Baltimore because there's really not not speed in the race, at least not uh, a speed horse like Promises Fulfilled, who really, you know, set that fast pace and Justify was right off his flank. This race, I think Justify is going to control the pace. It won't be as fast. And I think he's just going to pull away and win by four or five lengths, maybe more. Uh, good, good Magic is obviously the second best horse in the race. But because of the track conditions, you know, even though it was, you know, it was, it was a peanut buttery surface there in uh, Churchill Downs, it doesn't mean that uh, the horses who love the mud in, in Churchill Downs are going to love the mud at Pimlico because we've seen some wild finishes in, in, in Churchill Downs where some crazy performances in the mud and then the horses don't come back and run the same way. But uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Justify with good magic, and I'm going to look for a couple of horses underneath just to pinpoint. I like Lone Sailor for third because Lone Sailor is the only stone closer in the race. And I like Tenfold, the Steve Asmussen horse, because he's only run three times and he might have some more upside than some of the other horses in the race. So what I'm going to do is put Justify on top with good magic second and then uh, go uh, hard in, in triples with with Lone Sailor and Tenfold, and I'll also play some Saber Exactas with Justify over Lone Sailor and Tenfold in case Good Magic has a uh, clunker in this race and doesn't run back to what he did in the in the Derby. But um, beyond that, it's really there's not really much in this field, and it just probably other than the two favorites is the weakest field I've seen in the Preakness in a while. So uh, I'm going to throw it back to Pete now. Well, I don't blame you guys. It's really hard to do the Preakness, especially when you get a big winner like Justify in the Kentucky Derby. I mean, I, I wish we could give our fans a little bit more. I mean, obviously our fans who are horse racing aficionados understand the strength of Justify. Um, you know, the weather, you know, did not prove to be a problem for Justify, obviously, at Churchill Downs for the Derby. But it wasn't. It was raining in Kentucky, but not as much as like a monsoon. It's literally a monsoon almost in Baltimore, folks. Uh, if you're listening to this, so that's going to make it tough for for Bob Baffert and Mike Smith to absolutely repeat as a dominating uh, a dominating repeat as they did in the Kentucky Derby. I don't think it's going to be that easy for Justify. I still think Justify has a chance to win, but I agree with you, Dana. A lot of the uh, front end speed is not really there. I mean, Diamond King is probably going to go out with Good Magic and Justify, 
and you know tenfold is going to be in the mid of the mid pack, and obviously Quip is going to go out there in, in front as well. Don't worry about the one hole in a in a race horse with uh, in a horse race with only eight horses on it. So the one hole shouldn't be too bad for Quip. Um, I agree with you on Lone Sailor being the only uh, Stone Cold closer there, uh, Dana. Um, and then um, you know you know Ryan, I agree with you, Ryan. It's really really tough to bet a, a, a one to two horse like Justify and all that stuff. And I was really hoping I could try to give our fans like an alternate bet. Uh, to make uh, to try to get around Justify in case he does um, sort of falter, if you will. I don't think that Good Magic is going to uh, finish second in this race, even though they're at a shorter distance. I wonder um, if Good Magic not being as strong as Justify, I, I, I don't think he's as strong as Justify, I should say. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on. I think you're going to get somebody like Lone Sailor finishing second in this race, especially with all the, uh, with all the junk on the racetrack. The, I mean, like literally standing water and stuff like that. Uh, I really think that Lone Sailor has the speed figures and the uh, closing ability to come uh, to come from behind, especially with the track being as wet as it's going to be. Now, obviously, that won't encourage a lot of front-end speed, but I still think Lone Sailor is definitely going to be there. I think you said he's going to finish third there, Dana. I also like Bravazo. The reason why I like Bravazo is I like the jockey change of Luis Saez. Luis Saez has not ridden Bravazo yet, so maybe a change of a more aggressive jockey might do well for, for uh, Bravazo who's also somewhat of a closer, uh, you know, usually mid-pack. But maybe they're going to, you know, maybe Bravazo, I think, is going to travel a little bit differently with Luis Saez on his back. So I like Justify with Lone Sailor and Bravazo. I mean, obviously, Good Magic will be there as well. But if you want to put four horses together and just toss them up and box them, just in case Justify is not a clear-cut winner, I like the seven Justify, the eight Bravazo, the two Lone Sailor, and the five Good Magic. Gentlemen, any more comments? Ryan, we'll start with you. No, I just, uh, you know, it's just not a very appealing uh, preakness, especially with this weather. So I'm probably not going to play most of the cards. Uh, I will watch, obviously, the preakness to see uh, if Justify has a chance to go on for the Triple Crown. I think he can win the Triple Crown. I think I think he, he's the, the winner of this race, but I have to bet against him. I have to go with good magic. But it'll be interesting to see Justify win this race and then go on to Belmont with a chance to win a Triple Crown. So I'm going to be more of a fan than a better, but uh, – at least I'm going to give it a shot. Dana? Yeah, I. You mentioned Bravazo. I, I, I do think Bravazo has a has a good chance to, to to run second or third. You know, depending upon what Good Magic does. Uh, I'm just a, a little bit worried about his price. I don't know if he's going to be the third choice, fourth choice, or sixth choice in this race. But he ran a very surprisingly good Derby, sneaky good. He was he he had a wide trip, and he was fourth. Until late in late in the stretch, he got caught by a couple horses late, but he you know, he ran a creditable race out there at the Derby. The only other question I have about Bravazo, he's just he's not really a consistent horse. He ran two nice races uh, in, in his uh, first two races as a three-year-old, and he threw in that bad clunker in Louisiana down Derby. I don't know what happened to him in that race, but he was just awful in the Louisiana Derby. That's why he was so surprising. He ran so well in the Derby. The Kentucky Derby, and so I just don't know what to make of Bravazo because of that. Uh, I, I don't know if he can run two good races in a row, uh, but he certainly has a shot to finish second if, if Good Magic or even Justify has has a bad day. Gotcha. That makes sense there, Dana. Uh, you know, it's just it. I I just think that there is going to be a bad day for one of the two favorite horses. I mean, being in a monsoon the way that it is, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I. Maybe Good Magic and Justify are just that strong, and they're just going to do battle again, like sort of like Secretariat and Sham. I mean, it's like literally almost sort of shaping up to be that way. But we'll definitely see what happens on Saturday. Ryan, real quick, I hope you don't, if you don't mind me, sort of going off script. Uh, I've noticed that you have um, semi-retired from Five Minutes to Post dot com. Is uh, are you doing anything new? No, I don't have anything in the pipeline right now. Um... It was just a lot of work for me, uh, a lot of work with no compensation. Uh, I don't usually like to do that. I'm okay with charity work, but uh, I really like all the writers there and everything like that. I just uh, I just couldn't stick around to uh, do all the work and not have any, any reward at the end. So I'm just uh, happy to be here at Prescott Downs in beautiful Erie, Pennsylvania right now, and I'm rooting in the uh, four to try to keep my pick four alive into the final race. And uh, – that's going to be it for me. So thank you very much for asking. Well, no problem. Real quick before uh, before we uh, let you go, real quick. Any? Uh, I know we uh, actually you broke some news that you sold Resonate or Resonate was claimed. Uh, 
in the last race. So are you using some of the claim money this weekend? Uh, money's burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> 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 that's, 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 that's about right. But I'm trying to get a little bit of extra money here. Uh, hopefully this four will win race seven at Prescott Isle as they load into the gate. And then uh, we'll be sitting pretty with four shots to win the pick four. Uh, we had an 18 to one shot uh, win the first leg of the pick four. So we're looking, we're looking real good here. So let's go number four, Colonel something or other. I don't even know his name, but hopefully we beat Jaguar Paws. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to let you go. It's time to race. All right, brother. Good job, Ryan. Thanks. Thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate that. Well, Dana, just you and I left over. Do you have anything else to say about the Preakness before we uh, move on? I, 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 you know what? I don't re- recall a, a, a Derby and a Preakness that both had, you know, sucky tracks, like well, both of them. You know, usually you get one, uh, you know, you've seen some Derbies where, you know, the track came up very wet, you know, the, the 2013 when the Orb wanted, 20, 2009 when Mind That Bird wanted, and 2010 when Super Saver wanted. But then they ran the Preakness, and th- those were fast tracks. You rarely see both of those races end up, uh, you know, in, in pools of water. So I just hope the Belmont turns out to be a really nice day. We can see a fast track here <laughs> at one of the Triple Crown races. Right. No, I hear you on that. Well, the funny thing is that this Preakness field sort of looks like a Belmont field, you know, with only like eight horses in it. But, uh, you know, usually there's about 12 or 13, even sometimes 14 horses in this field at the very, very most. But uh, obviously that is not going to be the case on Saturday. Well, that's about all I think that Dana and I can really break down for the Preakness Stakes. I mean, it uh, seems pretty clear-cut uh, that Justify should be able to repeat. But just in case, uh, you know, don't forget about our other picks like Lone Sailor and Bravazo. Make sure you throw those guys in your exotics. Don't forget to tune in to other shows and podcasts here on Sports Radio Detroit, including Mitten Sports Talk, Parsons and Slow, Fanarchy, The Set Piece, Pucking Around, Mitten Sports Talk. Grave Discussions, The Laugh Track, Spinning in the Wheels, Wings, Pistons, Lions, and Tigers SRD, as well as SRD Ringside. And also don't forget to check back for more of the Whip and Nene podcast as the Triple Crown season progresses. And, Dana, where can folks find you and social media? At D. Garuder uh, on uh, Twitter. Very, very good. And they can find me on Twitter at Son of USFL Dad. Well, thank you very much for listening, everybody. Reminder, this is the Whip and Nene podcast, and also remember what Stan Laurel says. You can lead a horse to water, but a pencil must be lead. Good luck, hail, and farewell. This has been an SRD production.